I'm not entirely sure how it happened, but the tech news was somehow able to penetrate my quarantine defenses. And now the only way to get rid of it is to read it. Everybody knows that. Sony has officially unveiled the PS5 controller. And this is our headline story, apparently, somehow. Sony has now dropped the DualShock naming scheme for their controllers, calling the new model the DualSense, ostensibly because the new controller features haptic feedback, which, of course, will be much more different from standard rumble features somehow. The triggers are also adaptive, which means that the tension will change depending on whether the context is shooting a gun or drawing a bow. The DualSense also has a built-in mic for online chat, a create button in place of the share button, and some subtle changes to the grip. Got a lot of finger quotes going on here, but come on, let's be honest. It looks more like an Xbox controller. Okay, there, I said it. But that's not the only thing that comes to mind. The design is reminding the internet of everything from a tank top to Mario's overalls to Strong Bad from Homestar Runner. I'm glad we can joke about these things instead of arguing though. <laughs> nice job, everyone. Google has finally released the free tier for their Stadia game streaming service. So now anyone can go out and create a Stadia account and get two free months of Stadia Pro, which allows them to play a limited number of free games, get discounts on other games, and play at 4K on some devices. Although resolution is actually being limited to 1080p right now due to the COVID-19 pandemic. While the paid pro tier has already been available for five months, the launch of Stadia Basic looks like it's going to be the real test for whether the game streaming service can catch on with the general public. I mean, while getting access for free is cool though, the list of free games is a little less cool, being mostly made up of games that have been out for some time. I was promised a 1000 player battle royale match, Google, and I'm still upset that I don't have it. And it seems like now that more people are online, more often, rumors are spreading much easier with a little Nintendo Switch game called Cooking Mama getting caught in the crossfire. Over the weekend, word started spreading that the game used players' Switch consoles to mine cryptocurrency. This was apparently based on a February press release by an unrelated company claiming that the game would feature blockchain technology. The game's developer, First Playable, has denied the rumors, but the rumor mill claims that the devs weren't supposed to know that the game mines crypto. The fact is, the claims about crypto mining don't seem to actually be based on any small shred of evidence, and this all seems to be a grand misunderstanding made worse by the game's problems with distribution since its launch in February. <sighs> I'm just sorry you had to go through this, mama. Now it's time for the Quick Bits brought to you by Manscaped, makers of the world's first all-in-one safe and easy manscaping kit. The Perfect Package 3.0 has their Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof body trimmer with its ergonomic design, quality ceramic blades with advanced skin safe technology, and powerful 7,000 RPM motor so you can manscape yourself with incredible speed and not worry about painful tugs because the Lawnmower 3.0 has compact anti tug adjustable trimmer guards and a built in LED light. Get 20% off and free shipping on your Perfect Package 3.0 purchase when you use code TECH at the link below or on manscapes.com. Hey ho, Bitquits, away, yay. Boutique PC Maker, oh, he made me say it at the beginning. Ah, oh, rats. Boutique PC Maker Main Gear has announced the Live, a ventilator they developed in-house. While the Live was designed in collaboration with a board of advisors composed of medical professionals, the device is not actually FDA approved yet. And that might be because it actually looks like a PC. The FDA might think it's a late April Fool's joke that's in very poor taste, but apparently it's not. Borderlands 3 has a new game within a game that can help medical research. Basically, the game requires you to match rows of tiles which represent microbe DNA samples. Wait, sorry, what's that? Altruism isn't enough of an incentive for you? Well, you'll also be rewarded with in-game currency so that you can buy your precious skins and so forth. Right? Hey, skins. In an attempt to fix their myriad security issues, Zoom is consulting with Alex Stamos, the former chief security officer at Facebook. We were gonna write a joke about this story, but I think we already did it. <laughs> and Microsoft has released a bunch of new information about gaming on both Xbox and Windows. A beta SDK is being released for the Windows 10 game bar so developers can create custom widgets. And Razer and XSplit have actually released widgets alongside the announcement. Also, xCloud is launching in 11 more countries today, just in time to steal Stadia's thunder. Poor Google, they just can't win. 
Finally, the love story between Windows 10 and Linux continues with the latest Windows 10 preview featuring integration for Linux files in Windows Explorer. Is this exciting for Linux users? I'm actually not even sure. What is it that you guys want? Do you want Windows to be more accommodating to Linux or do you just want it to go away? Like this episode, because it's over. Come back on Friday for more tech news, but I won't be there. I will be at home relaxing after the hard work of growing this, this beard. <laughs>